Welcome. This video will go over solutions to the Chapter 6 test with questions from both Paper 1 and Paper 2. So these all have to do with reaction rate or kinetics. Number 1 wants to know which unit could be used for the rate of a chemical reaction. This should be a quick to answer one because remember rate is change in concentration over time. So a unit for concentration would be moles per decimeter cubed. But then you also need to have the per time in there. So the only one that fits this criteria is C. Number two wants to know what's the function of iron in the Haber process. So since it says function, even if you don't know anything about the Haber process and you know this test is on reaction rate, a good guess is that it's a catalyst. And since it's a catalyst, its job is to do two things, lower the activation energy and speed up the reaction. How does it lower the reactivation energy? By providing an alternative or easier pathway for the reaction to follow. So shifts to equilibrium, nope, doesn't affect it. Decreases rate, nope, that's the opposite of what we want. Provides an alternative reaction pathway with lower activation energy, it's exactly what we want. Reduces the enthalpy change, nope, has no effect on enthalpy change. So C would be the correct choice. Number two showed up again on the second page here, so I'm going to jump to number three. The formation of nitric acid from nitrogen dioxide, exothermic, reversible, blah, blah, blah. So again, we're looking at what effect does a catalyst have? Remember, a catalyst increases rate. It affects forward and reverse reactions equally, and it lowers the activation energy, which is why it affects the forward and reverse reactions equally. What it doesn't affect is the equilibrium or the yield. So A, it increases the yield, not true. Increases the rate of the forward reaction only, not true. Increases the equilibrium constant, not true. Has no effect on equilibrium position, that's true. It only affects rate. Question number four wants to know what quantities in the enthalpy level diagram are altered by the use of a catalyst. This is a really good way to see why forward and reverse reaction are affected equally, but enthalpy isn't. Because what happens is, remember, you start with your reactants here and your products here. So I can see this is endothermic because the products have more energy. And what a catalyst does is it lowers this hill. Because normally, to get to the top of this hill, that's the activation energy. Whether you get to the top of that hill coming from the reactants to the products or the products to the reactants, either direction, forward or reverse, you have to get to the top of the hill. That's where the transition state is and where the products get made as the collisions occur. So what a catalyst does is it brings this hill down to, say, here. And so both 1 and 2 decrease in value, takes less activation energy for the forward and the reverse reaction, so they're both going to be faster. But delta H, or 3, remains unaffected. That's going to be the same no matter how much your catalyst speeds up the reaction rate. So A, 1 and 2 only are affected by the use of a catalyst. Number 5 was a little bit tricky. Curve X on the graph below shows the volume of oxygen formed during catalytic decomposition, just means you use a catalyst, 1 molar hydrogen peroxide. And so it says it's curve X right here. So you see that it's got a nice fast rate, nice long equilibrium there, plateau. So which change would produce, produce curve Y? Well, what you have to notice is there's two things about curve Y. It's showing it has a slower rate, but it's also showing it has a gr slightly greater yield. Not a lot, but definitely greater. So when you look at the four choices, those would all produce a faster rate, um, or slower rate, I'm sorry. Adding water is going to dilute it a little bit. Adding some 0.1 molar hydrogen peroxide will also dilute it. A different catalyst could make it go slower, and lowering the temperature would make it go slower. So the question is, which of those would also affect yield? And only the 0.1 molar hydrogen peroxide would affect yield because it would add some more hydrogen peroxide or some more of your limiting reactant, as well as slowing the rate down. So only B would do both. Question number six tells you hydrochloric acid is reacted with large pieces of calcium carbonate. Then it's repeated using carbonate powder, calcium carbonate powder. So what you've done is you've changed the size of one of the reactants. And so what effect will that have on activation energy and collision frequency? Well, it'll have no effect on activation energy. That's not going to change the required energy, the minimum energy needed for successful collision. 
it will um, increase the collision frequency because now the calcium carbonate is much more available, much more surface area for the hydrochloric acid to hit. So B, activation energy stays constant, collision frequency increases. Number seven, which can increase the rate of reaction? Increasing the temperature, yes. Adding a catalyst, yes. Increasing concentration, Yes, so D, all three of these will increase the rate. Number eight, sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid react according to the equation below. Which conditions will produce the fastest initial rate with two grams of powdered sodium carbonate? So this uh, reactant is being held constant. So it's really all about the HCl and whether or not we use a catalyst or change the temperature. So HCl, since it's aqueous, we could increase the concentration. So as we look at the four descriptions, um, the volume of HCl is not gonna matter. What's gonna matter is the concentration. And you notice it's either one or two molar. So the one molar is not gonna give as fast a rate. So either B or D, the two molar, the difference in the two conditions are the temperature, 323 and 348. So D, the warmer temperature will yield my fastest initial rate. Number nine, under which conditions will the reaction between one gram of calcium carbonate and excess hydrochloric acid be the fastest? So it's the same equation we were just talking about. This time, the hydrochloric acid is in excess. So it's all about the calcium carbonate. One large piece or once or powdered and powdered is definitely going to be faster. Um, even though it's in excess, more concentrated hydrochloric acid will certainly increase the frequency of collisions. It won't increase the yield, but it'll increase the frequency of collisions. So two molar and powdered calcium carbonate will be my fastest rate. Number 10, same equation, equal masses of powdered calcium carbonate were added to separate solutions of hydrochloric acid. The calcium carbonate was in excess. That's a big thing. So HCl, the concentration will be a factor as well as temperature. Volume of HCl won't be a factor as far as rate, but it could affect yield. So they want to know uh, the volume of carbon dioxide was measured at regular intervals. Which curve best represents the evolution of carbon dioxide against time for the acid solution shown in the table? So one and two have equal yield, so they must have had equal moles of HCl being used, but they have different rates. One has a greater rate than two. So um, even though the amount of H, the total moles of HCl would be the same, the concentrations would differ for these two. And then when I look at three and four, I see the same situation. Three and four have the same yield but four has a greater rate, or three has a greater rate than four, but these are both less than one or two. So I've got the most HCl with one and two, a greater concentration with one, and I've got the least, EC, least HCl and the um, less concentration for three and four, as well as just plain less of it for reaction four. So. If I look at this, 25 centimeters of two molar would give me, if I think 0.025 times two, this is gonna give me 0.05 moles of HCl. 50 centimeters cubed of one molar is also gonna give me 0.05 uh, moles of HCl. And 25 of one molar is only gonna give me 0.025 of HCl. So I know that this is either gonna be graph three or four because this is the one with less yield. It just has less HCl reacting. These are going to produce graphs one and two. So the question is, which graph is one and which is two? Well, the more concentrated is going to produce the faster rate. So this is graph one. The second one um, would have to be graph two because it's going to have the same yield because it's got the same number of moles. And then it would make sense that three would have, would be down here, it would produce, it has a fairly fast rate, at least a rate comparable to number two, see that they have the same rate here, but not as fast as one where it was the highest concentration, 
but definitely produces far less. So this is my best option here is one, two, and three, or letter C. Number 11, sketch two Maxwell Boltzmann energy distribution curves for the same sample of gas, one at temperature T and one at the higher temperature T prime. I labeled mine T1 and T2. Um, label both axes, so you got to mark for knowing this is number of molecules on the Y axis and it's energy on the X axis. So it's mostly a bell curve and then you've got the run out to the right. And then your second line, T prime, is going to have to shift right and be slightly lower. It's showing you got the same number of particles, so this should be the same under the area under the curve roughly, but you've shifted more particles to the right. More particles have more energy, so your peak is a little lower, but the whole curve is like fallen toward the right a bit. And then the other thing um, you should show is you shouldn't have any particles at the origin or at zero energy because um, zero energy would be absolute Kelvin, and we haven't even been able to do that experimentally. The explanation is that the higher energy means there's more collisions, and that means there's more collisions with more energy, so there's going to be more success. Number 12, they gave you a curve to start out, pretty standard curve, CO2, and then the question on the next page here, explain the shape of the curve, and this was a three-mark question, and what they really want you to know about that exponential curve is that your initial rate of reaction is your fastest, the slope is positive, so it's a product, but the rate immediately starts decreasing over time because there are fewer reactant particles left to collide. Um, you also could have noticed that it eventually comes to equilibrium. That's the flat spot up there. But they wanted you to observe three distinct things about this. The positive slope means it's a product. The initial rate is the fastest, and it decreases from that point forward because of fewer reactant particles it reaches equilibrium. Then number two, sketch a curve you'd obtain if you had double the volume but half the concentration. So similar to an earlier question, double the volume and half the concentration. Two times the half means that overall I've got the same moles of hydrochloric acid, so my yield is going to be the same. I'm going to reach the same end point up here eventually, but I'm going to do it much more slowly with a, a weaker concentration because the particles are not going to be able to find each other or collide as easily. So that was um, what you were supposed to point out in your explanation is it's going to be the same amount of reactant particles more spread out. So they're going to have a less steep slope or a slower rate, but eventually the same amount of product. Number three, outline one other way uh, and sketch a graph. Sketch a graph means you don't need any uh, labeled axes. It can be very simple. So any one of these would have been fine. You could have indicated you could measure the change in mass, and that would be a downward exponential slope. You'd see a decrease in mass. You could have looked at the change in pH or change in concentration using pH. In this case, it would increase as H plus is converted to water. The conductivity would decrease as the total number of ions in the solution decreases. Pressure would increase because of the production of gas. So any of those would have been good things to use. And the most common mistake on this was it didn't ask how to increase or decrease the rate. Some of you said, you know, change the concentration, change the temperature. It's asking how the rate can be studied or measured. Okay, and that's different. Number four, define the term activation energy and state one reason why it's reasonably fast at room temperature. So activation energy, it's just the minimum energy to be successful. Successful collision, make product, have a reaction. Now remember, activation energy and the energy of the particles are two different things. Activation energy is like the standard you have to reach. Like if 90% is the cutoff for an A, that's what you have to get. Your score is still going to be different. You're going to get your score and compare it. So the energy of particles, particles... Um, you know, have their own energy, and we compare that to the activation energy. And so then um, they want to know why it takes place reasonably fast, because it's a low activation energy, or maybe it was a really concentrated sample of HCl, or maybe there was a lot of surface area to the um, carbonate that you had, the calcium carbonate. And number 13, you have a solution of hydrogen peroxide and sodium iodide. The yellow color of iodine can be used to determine the rate. So the yellow is going to be over here. The yellow color is going to be produced. 
The experiments repeated with some changes for each of the following predicts state and reason its effect on the rate of reaction. So the concentration of H2O2 is increased at constant temperature. So we've got more H2O2, so that is going to increase the rate. How come? Because we have more reactant in the same area, which is going to be more collisions. The solution of NaI is prepared from a fine powder instead of large crystals. Well, if you notice, the NaI is aqueous, so it really doesn't matter how you made this solution. If you were using the solid form, then yes, a fine powder would affect it. But since it's aqueous and in solution, then it doesn't matter how it got mixed up. It would have been quicker to mix it with the fine powder, but that's not the question. And then B, explain why the rate of the reaction increases when the temperature of the system increases. And what they're looking for for your three marks is that an increased temperature means there's increased energy. That means there's increased collisions and there's more energy per collision. 